Yeah, hello and uh, welcome to another workshop here live from Hofer Studios. My name is Stefan, I'm a tutor at Hofer College and today I want to talk about compression. You know, um, compression is uh, probably one of the uh, most important tools in the repertoire of every audio engineer and uh, we use it in our day-to-day -day productions. But still, it's um, kind of hard to understand and also um, hard to master. And it takes years to um, learn how to hear or of what, uh, uh, for what uh, parameters you have to, uh, to look or what uh, you need to hear when uh, we are talking about compression. So uh, that's why I'm here and I want, really want to talk about the basics of compressions, how a compressor works, uh, what parameters we have, and yeah, so um, if you are um, attending our online classes on a regular basis, you know how this works. If you are new here, we have a chat, we have a live chat right uh, next to me, I re always read it, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask, so um, yeah. Keep in mind that this is a re basic workshop, so I know there are many people out there who are a bit uh, further in our online courses and n have read very much about compression and about different types of compressors or different models or whatnot. P please keep your... Uh, uh, questions basic for today because this is an entry-level workshop and um, yeah, um, you c you get the time to ask your questions um, about different models or different um, types of compression. Since we got a compression masterclass coming up on April 28th. So yeah, um, this uh, will be the follow-up to what we do today. And today I have some simple um, examples here in my DAW. For today I'm using Studio One, but the concept of compression will be uh, the same in uh, every DAW you use and most of them will have come with a um, stock compressor like this one. This is um, just a, this is the main compressor I'll be using for today. S um, and yeah, I guess every uh, DAW you are using out there Ableton, Cubase, Pro Tools, FL Studio, whatnot, will have a stock compressor. <laughs> but before we talk about compression, uh, we have to talk about dynamics, because this is um, what we are working with when we're talking about compression. And we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is dynamic or, or was, what does dynamics mean? Basically, it's just the, differ the difference between quiet and loud. So we have a, we have a signal or we have a... Um, yeah, we have a signal and we have a, we have a difference uh, from the loudest point to the quietest point and that's basically what we're talking about. From musical standpoint, um, we have we have these. We have um, a range from uh, piano pianissimo to um, forte, fortissimo for the people who uh, actually can <laughs> read music. Um, this will be an indicator for the musicians um, on how loud to play their instrument. But we also have it, have it in our DW. As you can see, we have different signals and they have... Um, their peaks on a certain point. In this case, I just uh, um, screenshotted a part of uh, of, an, of a session in uh, my DAW with some orchestra parts. And yeah, as you can see, they peak on completely different points. So we have, this is the dynamic range we are working here with here. And yeah, this can uh, look completely different uh, um, depending on what kind of music you make, on how, um, what kind of uh, material you're working with, actually. So, for example, we could compare these two tracks to each other. 
this could be I don't know um, the upper upper waveform could be from a I don't know a jazz um, jazz uh, piece and the with the one down here could be from a uh, probably a r modern rock or metal production or even a techno track with uh, yeah a completely different l dynamic uh, range and loudness range as you can see what we are talking about is the difference between the quietest point and the loudest point and if you take a look at the um, track up here can see uh, that the loudest point is around this point here and the quietest point is yeah let's say here or here so you get the, the, the dynamic we are working with is the difference between here and here and if we take a look uh, down there we got kind of a yeah, sausage um, waveform with um, a dynamic range that isn't quite as huge as we have it up here. Let's say we have these parts are well, quite the same, but here we have the if in the intro, so we have our dynamic range. This is about this. You can even see that the intro of the upper track is a bit quieter than the part down here. So yeah, this range is uh, not as huge as we have it here. Okay, now that we... Have, do we have any questions um, regarding what I talked about right now? Okay, then let's go on and then we have to ask ourselves what even is a compressor or what does a compressor do? First of all, it's a dynamic compressor. As I already stated, we are talking about dynamics and we need tools to process the, the dynamic and what a uh, compressor does is um, it reduces the dynamic range of a signal and there is a misconception about it, what a compressor does because some people think that a compressor uh, compressor's function is to make signals louder that's that might be part of the truth but actually uh, the only thing a compressor does is it makes a signal quieter it reduces the difference between the loudest peak and the qu the quietest uh, point of the waveform that's what a compressor does basically and it does that uh, in many different ways, depending on, um, from a technical standpoint, uh, depending on what type of compressor we are using. That's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the just the basics, and that's why I'm um, just working with the um, standard compressor here, uh, which is basically based on uh, uh, a VCA. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier where we have a signal, an incoming signal, which is going to the VCA. And if you have an amplifier, that m doesn't necessarily mean that it uh, just uh, makes the signal louder. It can also make it quieter. But to, in, uh, but to do that, the compressor needs to know which components of a signal needs uh, must be reduced to what extent the signal must be reduced and in what time frame 
um, the um, compression or the reduction has to be applied. And these parameters, or most of these parameters, can be seen here. This is um, the diagram of um, th that you already uh, that you've already seen in the compressor um, that I've shown you in the beginning. Just to make things clear, on the x-axis we have the input level of um, of our signal. That's what go That's what is going into the compressor. And on the y-axis we have our output level. That means there we can see um, what is go coming out. And now um, we need to talk about the threshold. The threshold is visualized in this diagram by this white line here. Here, and what it does is it's um, setting the volume um, or the level of uh, the signal um, that is. Um, it sets a value for um, that point of the signal where the compressor starts to work. So, for example, um, if you have a um, your, your threshold set to well, it's, let's say we have it here at minus 50. So every signal that is louder than minus 50 dB will be reduced to some extent by the compressor. And how much it um, actually will be, um, it gets reduced is determined by the ratio. That's the angle you see here. If we um, set our ratio, for, for example, we set our ratio to 1 to 1. Ratio means um, it's kind of which, uh, how much uh, um, of the signal we, we, um, we send into the compressor actually comes out, if you, if you know what I mean. And if we just set it to 1 to 1, the signal um, gets... Uh, through like it comes in. That means if you just go in like this, the compressor just works kind of like a cable, you would say. It's just going through. But if you um, change the ratio um, to, for example, uh, 3 to 1 here, that means that just a third of what's um, uh, of the um, what's going in is actually coming out. So, um, if we have um, a gain reduction, uh, if uh, we have a signal that gets reduced by, um, we, we send in 3 dB and we have a, uh, we, um, um, how, to, how to say it, if we have a ratio from 3 to 1, only 1 dB uh, is, um, will get through the compressor. We also have uh, um, here, if you have a, um, ratio from uh, infinity to one that just means there is um, the signal th we we basically divide through infinity so the compressor would uh, let nothing through just brick wall it and then we basically got a limiter next po point uh, we have uh, here and which can be seen is the makeup gain uh, we would see what the makeup day gain does we just take the um, the curve we have here and just raise it a bit because if we make a signal quieter um, we assume that it sounds worse than before because we um, always uh, if something sounds louder it sounds better to our ears and that's not what we want so if we want to decide um or if we want to control what we actually did with the compressor, then we have to match our gain, or, uh, we have to match our output gain, so we actually can control what the compressor does. Because if we just reduce our levels, uh, our, our, our peaks with the compressor, and we control, uh, and then we bypass and, and we 
to try to check what we did here. We will always think that the quiet signal sounds worse than the loud signal and in that case the uncompressed signal and that's why um, we need the makeup gain. Next, I, I already said that, um, well, let's check for some questions if we already got some. Something not working here, okay. Will I? We have a question by Victor. Will I lose sound quality um, if I use a compressor? Not necessarily, but um, you can um, affect um, the the um, the audio material in a negative way. But I'll explain that later when we get to the examples. Um, so um, yeah, that's not necessarily a thing, but it's possible if you do it, um, let's say if you do it wrong, but we'll get to that. Anything else? Okay, actually I see some people like the Hofer compressor, but yeah, it's cool, but I'm not going to use it today because it's kind of complicated. And since we are talking about the basics of compression, I want to keep it simple and uh, just use um, something most people uh, um, can relate to um, and something with a, a good um, graphical visualiz visualization of, uh, of a compressor and in, that's why I'm using the stock Studio One um, compressor here. I know that the Cubase compressor uh, looks similar to that um, but I don't know how it, how it uh, looks in different DAWs because I'm uh, Studio One user for years now and yeah, but I'm sure you got similar um, stock compressors in your DAW and they are great for figuring out how it actually works. So, um, use, we have two things, we don't, we have two th parameters I talked about that you won't see in the diagram here. Because you can see, you see um, your uh, input level, your output level, the ratio, and if I just raise the curve, then you would see the makeup gain. But what you don't see are the time-based parameters. As I already stated, we uh, have to determine in what time frame the compressor reacts to uh, the incoming uh, signal and um, uh, when it the compression will return has to return to the initial value before the compression and that's what the attack and the release are for there we can also attack determines um, when um, um, the, uh, when the compression is or the, the reduction is applied and the release determines on how, uh, how quickly the levels return to the initial value. If we come back to, uh, you, you see, you've seen the uh, visualization and as you can see, we have exactly the same parameters here in the stock compressor of Studio One. We have our threshold, as you can see, it moves exactly that point on how uh, um, to on which um, level we, uh, the reduction kicks in we have our ratio uh, which uh, determines uh, to what extent the levels uh, will be reduced so if we just um, set it to one to one it basically just goes through that's when the makeup gain just works like any other gain, uh, like any other gain um, plugin or something. 
But if we just if we um, change that to let's say 2.0 to uh, 2.0 to one, then let's say we got um, two dB uh, incoming, then only one dB will come out. There we have our tag and release. This is usually um, the values are usually in milliseconds. Here is the makeup gain. These are the basic um, functions uh, of a compressor. And there we have something um, you'll also see on uh, most compressors, and that's the knee. We have a c question by Fate Voices. Does a compressor distort sounds? It can distort sounds. And I'll show you that in just a second, um, how a compressor actually can distort a sound. And that's um, because actually distortion is basically um, uh, and compression to at some point uh, get kind of similar. But as I said, I I'll show you that later. Um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna, gonna show you something else, and that's the knee. If you look closely um, at the the, the point, the threshold, we see the point. Uh, just gonna be, do it a little more extreme. As you can see, we are just uh, th th we got a straight. Uh, it goes straight in here and then straight over. But if we uh, increase the value of the knee. We get a nice curve, and what that means is that um, we have the, uh, um, that the compression gets applied a little before the um, the threshold that we determined, and we have a just a um, bit of a smoother transition instead of the yeah the hard set threshold we have here. Yeah, that's basically the overview of this compressor. I'm going to show you something else because I said that's, uh, that these are basic settings or basic parameters you see on most compressors, even on hardware compressors like this one. This is the Focusrite ISA 131. This has, uh, this has multiple effects. It has a gate. It has an EQ section and DSA, and that here, you we have our compressor with yeah basically the same parameters we have in our software. We have um, our threshold here; it's actually stepped. We have our ratio. We have um, attack, release, and yeah, our big gain up. A bit closer. Yeah, so so you see the concept of compression usually or the concept how compressors are set up are the same in most cases. There are some differences uh, even in uh, um, the different models, the different types of compressor uh, compressor uh, comp uh, compressors. But, as I already said, that's um, going to be a t topic of the Compression Masterclass coming up on April 28th. Okay. Let's head back to our DAW and I prepared some examples for you. Because I can talk about compression all day and no one cares uh, until somebody has heard or seen some examples. So uh, I, I guess the base, the most basic example on how uh, how to show you um, the um, effects of compression is on a simple sine wave, like this one. Gonna show you the waveform here as well. So what you're seeing now is just a basic sine tone 
nothing special, just test tone with no compression applied. Or the, the compressor is activated, but it's not reducing anything, as you can see here. Here you can see the level, the uh, amount of this um, reduction going on. It also indicates that you're going to see that later um, right here. So I'd suggest we just do that for now. And as you can see, the signal is not getting louder, it's just getting quieter. It's gonna bypass it. And it's back. Again, nothing special, just a sign tone to show off the, what the threshold does. Um, and that its a compressor is not meant to be to make sounds louder. Okay, I, I actually uh, unintentionally showed something else. Take a close look. Um, I, I want to show you now what effect the the um, the ratio has because if we uh, just um, Set it back to one to one. Um, as I said, in this case, nothing should happen. As you can see, there's no reduction going on. The signal's coming th through like it's going in. Let's uh, see what happens if we increase the ratio. Set it to two to one. Let's set it to three. Just going step by step by now. And let's go for the extreme. As you can see, um, this determines on how much gain reduction is going on at a certain threshold. We, we didn't change the th threshold uh, at this point. All we did is change the ratio. Can show you that again on a different example, like a snare drum. more as you see we got our ratio to one to one so nothing is happening let's increase it a bit and now we got Minus 3.77 dB gain reduction going on. Let's increase it even more so we get um, more gain reduction from the same threshold level. Yeah. Just gonna play back uh, the um, so you can see the waveform and turn turn the compressor on and off. Increase that a bit. Let's back up the, the threshold just. So what the threshold does, it, um, re um, it sets the point on when the compression kicks in and then reduces it by the, uh, the amount uh, that we set with the ratio. So if we go to the extreme again, 
and set it to one to one. Nothing's happening. Just a bit is happening actually. Because I set it to one point one. That's not what I wanted. Let's increase the ratio again um, to show um, that uh, it um, determines the extent to, uh, on how much the um, the reduction is actually uh, the signal is reduced by the compressor. I actually got to zoom in by now. Uh, uh, This is without the compressor, and this is uh, this is with the compressor with the threshold set to minus forty, and the ratio of twenty to one. So what's going on is um, that we have reduced the difference between the loudest part of this snare drum and the quietest part, and you can see this. Um, yeah right here get back We zoom in now. Now we have here. That's the start of the um, of the snare drum, and this is the sustain. And you you can see the difference is not that big because we reduced it. Um, we were not uh, very uh, careful when we did that. And if we compare it to the signal without the compression. difference between the loudest part and the quietest part is much bigger and yeah any questions uh, so far Okay, in that case, let's go on. Because all I touched for now are the threshold and the ratio. What I didn't touch were the attack and the release. Like I said in the beginning, the attack um, time determines um, um, in what time frame the, um, the compression must be applied and the release determines when the um, signal returns to or the level returns to its initial value so um, what that means is um, that uh, if we set a, a really short attack time like here um, we have uh, minus uh, 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 0.10 milliseconds and let's set the release time for one millisecond that means that um, Yes, it actually is. Uh, I love uh, the Wave of Server. It's actually freeware, so you can f download it and, and use it for absolutely free with the same functions I'm showing off here. Um, okay, um, attack time. If we set a short attack time, that would mean that um, really quickly after the signal kicks in or the compressor and the compressor should react real, really, really quick because obviously uh, 0 0.10 uh, milliseconds is really quick. Um, and what that means is that we get um, reduction um, of the signal really, really quick. I want to show that again on the um, on the sine wave. Because that gets him, it gets important when we come to transients uh, later. Let's go back to the sine wave, and let's say we go with a um, moderate release time and a really fast attack time. 
So take a closer look uh, to um, the beginning of the waveform coming in here in the wave observer. Have to hit play. So what you, let's pause it for a moment. Show you the waveform. What you see is that, yeah, we got, um, this is uh, kind of where the compressor kicks in uh, really quickly. So that means, um, that it reduces the transient of uh, of the signal coming in and um, just kicks in kind of immediately. Now watch what happens if we turn up the attack time. What you see is that, um, especially in the beginning, something's changed. And what changed is that we told the compressor um, to uh, apply the reduction a little bit later. We went from one po uh, 0 0.1 milliseconds up to 22.9 milliseconds. That means that it takes the compressor a bit longer to apply the reduction, which means that the beginning of our signal, which you can see here, is not affected by uh, the compression that's going in. This can come become quite handy when uh, we are um, trying to put some emphasis on the transient of a signal. F for example, if we go back to our snare drum, Gonna set a bit of aggressive compression here so we can see the effect. Let's go back to a quite moderate release time. As you can see, the um, compressor acts uh, quite quickly in, in this example and uh, kind of levels out the transient coming in. So it's a bit closer to um, the quieter parts of the signal. Let's turn, it, let's turn the compression off again. Whoop, where is it? Just to compare, this uh, right here is the, the uncompressed signal. I just turned it uh, on bypass. And here we have the compressed signal. You, you can see two things here. First, we um, just made the signal quieter by compression, not louder. I'm gonna show you how that works uh, in, in a moment. But um, you can also see that um, yeah, it, uh, the compression was applied quite quickly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's always important to hear the signal because visual indication, always a good thing, but we are working with audio here, so you got to use your ears. Um, okay, now, as I said, if I turn up the attack time now, that should probably mean that the um, transient or the, the beginning of the snare drum should not be... Uh, um, affected in the way it is when we use a short attack time. 
suggest we just try it out, increase the attack time. Yeah. As I already said, this is the, on the left side, you can see the signal of the, of the um, snare drum with, uh, with a longer attack time. And on the right side, you have it with a very short attack time. You see the transient here is uh, le less affected than uh, with the fast attack time, which uh, means that the snare in this case sounds a bit punchier because we get the transient um, the unaffected transient without the compression. Can even go a bit longer with the attack time, but then it just kicks in very lately, and which means. Yes, it's almost um, um, not usable at this point. I want to, uh, now. I want to come back uh, on uh, to the question of fade voices, and he asked if a compressor distorts sounds. If you um, set uh, um, both uh, time parameters, attack and release, um, um, or basically, if we if you set a really short release time. Listen closely. If the release time is set real, really short, that means that the um, that the the um, signal returns to its initial value uh, really, really quick. Which means uh, the sound gets pushed back and uh, ex uh, exceeds the um, the f the f uh, the um, the um, uh, I lost I lost the words. <laughs> um, so this uh, what I, what I want to say is if you uh, you have to be a bit careful with your release time because if you set your release time too short, uh, this can lead to distortion, as you can hear in this snare sound. Because in this moment, the um, the um, the return of the initial value is uh, th everything gets pushed back into the signal, leading to distortion. That's why, for example, if you have a a metal guitar, everything is distorted, everything gets pushed back, and that's why if you see the waveform of a metal guitar, it's just as sausaged as you've seen in the example in the presentation. Which means yes. A compressor can distort sounds, um, but if you are careful with it, um, it doesn't. Just keep an eye on your release time and um, try not to um, distort the sound uh, by that. But it can also be come in handy if you're doing sound design, but um, that's uh, not what we're talking about here. show you another example let's go to this piano now the compressor is off and we turned it on with a really short with a really short attack time moderate release time now I'll check what happens if I go for a real fast release
Yeah, as you hear, there is distortion going on. But still, the signal is quieter at this point, and that's what we need the makeup gain for. Let's check that. I'll go for a compression that is not distorting the signal. Just to explain again what I did here, I set my threshold, so the point uh, the, uh, where the compressor kicks in to what would it uh, just go for a decimal value of minus 26. My ratio um, um, is set to 10 to 1, so it's quite aggressive. Um, attack, well, still fast, and release. Um, uh, let's say just a uh, moderate release. And now we have to check what uh, um, 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 if we, we want to go back to uh, if we want to check um, what the compression is actually doing, we have to work with the makeup gain. And what happens in m many cases is that um, people look for the value of the reduction here. See here the highest value is 4.155 decibel. Let's use the same value here in the makeup gain. And bypass it. As you hear now the compressed signal is actually louder and that's not what we want. We, If you want to check then we need um, um, a value where the peaks are approximately as loud uh, in the compressed signal as they are in the uncompressed signal. So we have to set a lower May value for the makeup gain. That's kind of the point where I'm happy, um, where we have uh, similar levels uh, if we um, if we um, bypass the compressor and check uh, the compressed and the uncompressed signal. What happened is that we, um, as I already said, we de um, decreased the dynamic range or we reduced the dynamic range. And now that's what most people uh, mean uh, when they say we can make vocals louder. We can use a compressor to make things quieter or make the peaks quieter so we can raise the level of everything and therefore the, um, the complete signal is perceived louder. This, for example, comes in handy when we're talking about vocals because vocals in most cases are very dynamic. Got a vocal track right here. And for example, uh, if you want to uh, your um, your vocal to um, cut through the mix and not the quiet parts not to be um, buried somewhere in the mix, um, then you gotta reduce the dynamic range. So you can hear both the loud parts and the quiet parts as well. So let's just play it back. Took a little peek in the rap game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit on different news. They all look alike, sound alike. It's a shame this. That's actually something uh, I just saw that I um had the auto gain or the auto makeup gain activated. Quick question, uh, does anybody in the chat know what the auto uh, the automatic makeup gain does? Well, basically I just said it, uh, the automatic makeup gain kind of calculates 
the level of makeup gain necessary um, when if, um, um, according to the values we set in the compressor. The problem is that these values in many cases are not very accurate. So I'd suggest using your ears instead of relying on the auto gain or even the auto the auto um, attack adaptive release or whatnot. Just use your ears and actually learn how the compressor works and how to use it instead of relying on presets or automatic values. That's why, uh, yeah, I deactivated again. There's there's a um, there's a bug uh, going on in Studio One Five where if you just open the compressor, you just can touch the makeup gain. But that is not our problem at the moment. So yeah, just let's just listen to the uncompressed vocals here. Yeah, Hannah took a little peek in the. Rap game, it got confused. All I see is the same bullshit on different news. They all look alike, sound alike. It's a shame the same rappers spit the same songs with different names. Yeah, and I took a little peek in the rap game, it got confused. Shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't the makeup gain be the difference between the peak of the uncompressed signal and the peak of the compressed signal? I don't know. Um, yes, I'd say you're right. I don't know. Uh, th it's kind of hard for me to translate some sometimes in my head, uh, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, uh, ju if you go for by rule of thumb, just check. Um, um, when using the makeup gain, just check that you don't get any um, differences in the perceived loudness you you got. Um, so if it, if the compressed signal is louder, then the um, then the uncompressed signal turn down the makeup gain. If the compressed signal is quieter, then the then the uncompressed signal, then you should turn up the makeup gain. That's yeah, as I said, a matter of using your ears. Let's go back to our vocals here. Yeah. And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit on different news. They all look alike, sound alike. It's a shame the same rappers spit the same songs with different names. Yeah. And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit on different news. They all look alike, sound alike. It's a shame the same rappers spit the same songs with different names. Yeah. And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit on different news. They all look alike, sound alike. It's a shame the same rappers. I'm just playing with the ratio here just a little bit just to show you that the, we didn't change our threshold. So um, um, the ratio, uh, um, the, the point where the reduction kicks in stays the same, but how much the signal is reduced is determined by the ratio the same songs with different names yeah and i took a little peek in the rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit on different news they all look alike sound alike it's a shame the same rappers spit the same songs with different names yeah and i took a little peek in the rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit on different news they all see um the more uh, i increase the ratio the Harder the the uh, the more reductions going on, and you can actually like. see that here. Because it gets with even names. more uniform. Yeah. And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit on different. And let's just play with the release time again and see how we can distort these vocals. Just to show you some things you can. Um, um, Really destroy your your sounds or just uh, affect your um, um, your uh, your signals uh, in a negative way. Yeah. 
And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused All I see is the same bullshit on different news They all look alike, sound alike It's a shame the same rappers spit the same songs with different names Yeah And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused All I see is the same bullshit on different news They all look alike, sound alike It's a shame the same rappers spit the same songs with different names You see, I again chose a very short the shortest possible uh, in this compressor and yeah we get the distortion i promised yeah and i took a little peek in the Let's rap increase game a bit. and got confused all i see is the same bullshit on different news they all look alike sound alike it's a shame the same rapper spit the same songs with different names yeah and i took a little peek in the rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit on different news they all look alike sound alike it's a shame the same rapper spit the same song again just to prove that the third uh, the compressor just uh, makes things quieter. Got the makeup gain still up here. Just turn down again. With different names. Yeah. And I took a little peek in the rap game and got confused. The thing with woke vocals is um, because uh, the, uh, the vocals or the, the human voice is very dynamic and you're gonna need compression in to some extent. The thing is, if you just uh, if you use too much compression. We we already said that um, the um, peaks and the the quietest and the loudest part just come closer to each other, if, if we can say that. That means that not only your loud voice gets uh, gets quieter, but if you turn up the difference between a breathing a breathing noises or just mouth clicks, like something like. Uh, <laughs> You, you're gonna hear that a lot louder if you use um, uh, very much compression and it kind of sounds unnatural and um, yeah, even nasty if you want, uh, want to say that. There are songs and genres where, uh, where you can use a lot more compression than others, but um, especially in vocals, um, you should be a bit careful uh, when you're applying compression. Got a little clip right here. We got this breathing noise here. Just gonna loop that. Game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit. Rap game and got confused. All I see. You hear the difference? Now, now we got the comp uh, the the signal uncompressed. Here, yeah, you can hear the breathing sound, uh, but um, it's a lot quieter than the actual rap part here. Let's kick in the compression again. It's the same bullshit. Rap game and got confused. All I see. Just can hear how loud the the um, became uh, when i turn uh, turn on the compression it's again the same bullshit rap game and got confused because we we're reducing very very much uh, right now we got a reduction of minus 22 uh, going on right now let's go back all a bit. See is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all i see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused all I see is the same bullshit rap game and got confused. All I see is the same bullshit rap. It's still a bit emphasized. I just uh, chose some different settings uh, instead of the extreme settings we had before. It's still a bit more emphasized, but it's not as unnatural uh, as uh, we heard when we chose a lower threshold and stronger ratio, game for example. And got confused. All I see is the same bullshit rap game and it's just very unnatural and very loud so okay i guess um just let me check if i missed something i guess not but we can now compare just uh the the same signal and just switch up the compression a little bit so you can you can actually train to here to compression because as i already said it's quite hard to uh, to hear 
what's going on. And in most cases, if you hear the compression, it's probably enough, like I showed you in the examples of the, uh, the vocals. So yeah, um, I have the same snare sample with different values right here. So let's just um, compare um, different threshold levels and what's happening with the same value, uh, value of compression. Um, let's go back to this. Yeah, I already tried to match the levels. Um, so we can compare what's going on. This is the signal without the compression. This is with compression. Now we switch to, um, at this point, we have um, the threshold set um, to um, minus 20. Th that means everything above to minus 20 gets reduced. Now we go for minus 40 or minus 42. We got a lot more reduction because we set the point um, uh, um, on where the compressor kicks in much lower. So that means um, that also um, that the um, loudest part and the, um, the quietest part are a lot closer to each other. Let's go with the uh, minus 20. Still kind of extreme, but it looks and sounds like a snare, at least to me. Let's go back. As you can see, we still have the transient, but uh, since we chose a yeah, moderate um, attack time of uh, 50 milliseconds, we left the um, the release time at uh, 120, but we still um, chose um, to bring uh, the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part after uh, the compression kicks in a lot closer to each other. And that's why we got a lot more of that sustain and why it just comes kind of comes back um, after the initial, uh, the initial hit. Let's see about the compression. Let's just look at that. Let's just say this is where the compressor I don't have the exact values at this point, but let's just say that the compressor kicks in around here. And then it, you see, this part is very quiet. And then it comes back right here. That's why we get from slow, moderate attack time reduction, 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 and then it comes back to its initial value. And that's why the sustain is so loud at this point, and it sounds just like some kind of weird, weird echo or something like that. So. So let me just show you what happens if we choose a longer release time. Um, you see, if I increase the release time, it takes the compressor longer to come back to the initial level. That means that we should hear less of the sustain of the snare drum. Go back to the 120 and increase it. Back to a fast release time. Now it reacts a lot, a lot quicker. Does a short attack time need more CPU? It shouldn't. Let's check.
We are on snare two. That means take a look at this one. Nope. Basically nothing. nothing's changed. The CPU usage usually d uh, depends on what, what compressor you're using or what plugin you're using. There are some that don't need um, very much CPU uh, at all, like the stock compressor here. It just does its thing without actually doing the very much. But then we have compressors, other software compressors, emulations and whatnot that could use a bit more, but setting another release time shouldn't affect your CPU usage. Okay, um, I showed you what happens when we have a very short release time, which means we get distortion. Now I want to show you what happens if we have a release time that's way too long. B because if um, what should happen now is we choose a very long release time, something like this most uh, we can choose here is two seconds that means the compressor needs two seconds to return to its initial initial level um yeah watch what happens if we um have the same snare hits but i move this a bit so it uh, kicks in a bit a bit earlier let's play it back the right track as you can see uh, let's just pause it again what happened is or you can see that the second snare hit even if it's the same sample and the same compressor settings it's quieter and what happened is the, the we set a, a release time that is too long for this application and the compressor wasn't fast enough to return so the transient is affected because we are still the um, if the release is uh, still recover uh, the compressor is still recovering at this point and the next hit so it's it's the uh, the compression kicks in again it recovers it takes a it takes still recovering and then the next hit hit uh, comes through and that's what ha what's happening here the snare can be more long if you uh, uh, if the release is longer it's actually i i don't know wh what do you mean by that um because if I choose a shorter release, um, it it, sh it increases the sustain um, because the sustain the um, compressor comes back, and so the quiet release isn't as much affected by the compression as it would be if if um, we um, have a long release time. I can show you that you can actually hear that. Let's check. Okay, that's still too long because if I choose this uh, length, then the two seconds affect the transient. Still affect the transient. Let's go back to this. Let's go for initial one twenty. You can hear the sustain. Uh, you can hear the, uh, clearly hear the sustain of the snare drum. And let's choose a longer release time. And you can hear that the sustain of the snare drum kind of disappears if I go even further. At this point, it's almost in, uh, inaudible to me, but this could be my uh, levels in the headphone. Yeah, it's hardly audible. If we go for a short release time, we increase the sustain of the snare again. I can show you the wave observer.
let's compare these two. These uh, the, the left one is the long release time. So the gain reduction, the, the compressor that takes longer to recover that uh, than here. So you can see quite a difference, which means that the um, the quieter sustain isn't affected at that point. You can play around with that uh, depending on what kind of sound you're going for. But just be careful, as I already said, too short release times, too strong it actually is just already distorting at this point. And that's not what we necessarily want. If you're going for sound design or something, yeah, why not? But um, if you want, it to, uh, want to keep it natural, then you don't necessarily want distortion in, in your sound. The thing is, uh, in this, uh, the examples we had, uh, we had uh, by now were just single signals, single snare drum, a single vocal, a single what a single sine tone. Um, but what if we have um, multiple signals, like a drum group or a, or a um, even a, a, a group bus short release is more long. Short release is more long. What do you mean? Uh, a short release means that the signal sounds longer. Uh, you got to be a bit careful uh, by saying something like that. Because as, uh, w the um, release time just says the, that the compressor takes longer to recover. Let's go back um, to our exa to a, a snare example for this. And watch. As you can see, there's a small point, uh, blue, there's this small point that's that's wandering here. This is a, a long release time. Watch how long it takes to come back to uh, to uh, um, to the point uh, down there. That's what I meant with, uh, with the compressor needs longer to recover. Now do the opposite. And there's no visual indication. Great. So that's just the input. No, uh, completely ignore what what I said. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It, it means the sustain gets longer because it isn't affected by the compressor, and the compressor, as we already said, a compressor as a just uh, to understand your question, um, do you mean uh, that you would use a compressor as a gate or do you just uh, want to know about how to apply the same values to a gate? Because a gate is a completely different... Uh, is um, Technically speaking, a gate is an expander. So it's kind of the opposite of a compressor. What an expander does, it increases the dynamic range, the difference between the loudest and the quietest part which is kind of the opposite of a of a um, compressor which reduces the dynamic range so yeah uh, um uh, 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 gate also has attack and release um values uh, but uh, as i already said we want to talk about compression and this is also a topic for the compression masterclass yeah but um, you can, as I said, you can affect the sustain by playing around with the release time. If you want a short release, uh, if you want a shorter sustain, go for a longer release time. If you want longer sustain, you can go for a shorter release time. Just as I said, be careful that the uh, um, upcoming signal isn't uh, affected by a long release time, especially when we're talking about drums or a snare. You want that initial hit, this initial transient to hit as hard as possible. So you don't want your transients uh, affected uh, too much. But also you don't want some unnatural distortion. But yeah, 
let's say we have um, this snare. Let's say this is the compression we are going for. We get a reduction of minus 7.6. Let's take the same compressor and move it over here to a drum to a drum group. This is uh, different samples, but it's uh, that's the wrong one. That's the different. Uh, um, just want to talk uh, real quick because we don't have uh, that much time left about um, what it means um, to uh, use compression on single signals and on um, on groups, for example. Because if you want to um, have single signals or something, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to um, control your vocals for example or if you want to really uh, bring out that transient of the snare with a longer attack time for example then you can work with your um, longer uh, your longer attack time and yeah just see what what the release time is doing doing for you but if you want to sometimes audio engineers speak about gluing things together and that's often done or mostly done with compression because we can uh, in a group for example we can um, bring the signals or the peaks um, for example we take this um, th this drum group here you can already see that the snare is a bit louder than the rest it's just uh, more outstanding Let's go and apply some compression. Let's go a bit harder so you know what's happening. If you listen close, uh, if you listen to that, uh, and we can can already also show you the what's going on here. As you can see the level of the snare is reduced a little bit, and so it uh, feels a bit closer to the rest of the, the group and it doesn't stick out that much and feels a bit more controlled. And if we increase the attack time now, that means that the loud transient should come through a bit more. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Let's go back. Yeah, the attack, uh, the longer attack time is almost not uh, affecting the the transients here. If we choose a two uh, uh, attack time that is too short, that's also not great because then the then our snare drum, for example, just lacks punch, and that's not what we want. But usually, if you if you're um, working in a group like that, in a drum group like that, usually you choose a. Uh, Attack time that's a bit shorter uh, um, instead of working with a longer attack time if you want to bring up the transient of the single snare drum, for example.
can show you that again in your uh, on the example of this one. This is basically an instrumental um, stereo, stereo bus um, on a, uh, with the same drums, but this time we're adding guitar and bass and even a lead synth. So that makes it uh, our, basically makes that our master bus compressor, and in most cases, uh, sometimes um, when we receive um, mixes, we notice that the whole mix is pumping a little bit, and that's usually a good indicator that you compressed your uh, stereo out uh, too much. Um, it's also it's it's not quite easy uh, to. Uh, go for that one value that uh, that's also something there is n never that one value uh, that's the go to value for every kind of compression just also even if you choose presets from uh, from this one uh, from this compressor it has a lot of um, presets but um, you always have to be a bit careful because um, they were set uh, in in the ballpark of um, where it could work but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it works for your application because your um, uh, acoustic guitar or uh, could sound or could need something else than the acoustic guitar uh, they um, they used uh, um, when they did these presets or something. Just be a bit careful when you when you use presets and actually use your ears. That's also what we're gonna do now. So um, just use the real aggressive uh, the uh, the high ratio of 20, 20 to one. Just a quick uh, just a quick tip if you go uh, on um, mix bus compression. Aim for around minus one to minus two dB of gain reduction. So um, then you, you then you play in it safe and you um, don't uh, get any nasty pumping artifacts or something like that. What happens now? I just uh, I reduced the threshold, and now listen what happens when the bass drum comes in. We get this, uh, we get this nasty pumping sound, and like it's doing this, and that's not uh, what we want in a mix bus. We want to we want a controlled dynamic range and not um, the, that is gluing things together but not necessarily um, much audible you can see it's pretty sausage at this point this little piece uh, this little clip is not uh, very dynamic to begin with but as I already said you got metal guitars they are uh, heavily distortion, uh, heavily distorted, and by that they are already pretty much compressed. Okay, I guess I said what I want. To, I, sh I said what I want to say. I showed you what I wanted to show. Do you have any questions? It doesn't seem uh, like that then. Okay. Um, if 
you want, I can just show you, um, uh, tell you what's next. Um, we have, uh, um, oh, okay. Um, thanks, Victor. <laughs> um, is, if it's all about level reduction, why do compressors sound different? Because um, they are built differently. There are different kind of compressors, different kind of ways to build them. Uh, Jochen, uh, Jochen Weyer will uh, explain this in his masterclass. Just a little... Um, um, yeah, just a little sneak peek on what's coming because um, I guess most of you have heard of uh, things like the Universal Audio 1176 uh, FET compressor or the uh, Teletronics LA2A kind of legendary compressors or I don't know, um, many of you will know the um, um, the Distressor or the, the API what is it? Um, to, uh, 2500 or something um, a bus compressor they are just built differently and um, some of them are built so they sound very clean like the VCA compressors and some of them um, do um, yes some add some harmonics um, but as I said that's something Jochen will explain in the masterclass on April 28th and let's go to the next question. And uh, can we use compressors in MIDI tracks? Not in the MIDI tracks uh, itself, because MIDI uh, doesn't transfer audio. It transfers um, um, some um, commands, which can be tr tr translated to audio from by uh, from um, virtual instruments, uh, for example, but you can co use compression on the virtual instrument. That's that's possible in your DAW. For example, if we have, um, I don't know, just use something like this. Um, we have, a, if we just open a MIDI sequence, um, So this is a this is a separate channel now. Um, I don't uh, I don't gonna play something yet because we don't have the time. But as you see, this is named Spur 10 or Track 10 because we are speaking English now. Um, then you can add a compressor here. I gonna I actually gonna add another compressor just to show it to you. Um, and that's the Hofer IQ Comp. Um, and as you can see, I applied it to the channel where our MIDI instrument uh, is. And now I can adjust threshold here, attack here, ratio, release. We, got, we, got not, we do not care about this about uh, uh, that time. Uh, again, this will be explained in the masterclass. And yeah, so you can use it um, on the MIDI instrument or on the track, but not on the MIDI itself, so to say. Um, do we have any... Um, in which cases do we choose parallel compression? Well, that depends. There are people that use it on the whole mix. Um, some people use it on drums just to bring out, uh, for example, the snare and the toms a bit more. I don't know. I actually, I, I actually did that on uh, on the track I showed you, but I don't have the exact settings here. Um, yeah, parallel compression basically means um, that you have you can use it uh, like this, so you can mix the compressed and the uncompressed signal here. Uh, using the mix knob or the dry wet knob as it is called in some other cases this just mixes the uncompressed signal with the compressed signal another way you could do this is you have a source like the, the drum group here 
and you could send it to another track then it just um, and just use very aggressive um, compression and mix it in it just for example this just adds a little pump without um, the whole uh, drum sound sounding uh, like it's just going up and down and going completely crazy but yet again that's uh, n not uh, that one magic trick uh, if it's not necessary it's not necessary just use your ears if it sounds right without parallel compression then you probably don't need parallel compression but if you think yeah, that uh, your drums for example it's commonly used on drums you might try parallel compression I hope that helps to some kind of extent. Um, any further questions? It doesn't seem that there are any questions left. So in that case, uh, I have to say thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Um, if you have any further questions, you can always contact us. Um, um, I, we're going to leave the, uh, the chat uh, open. Um, yeah. Um, you can please check out our Instagram uh, where you get uh, news of, um, about everything going on at Hofer and Hofer College. Uh, for example, we have a um, special deal uh, at the moment for our for our courses. We for the diploma you get and the complete you get a tune track bundle um, with your course. Uh, for example, check our website hofer-college.com for more infos about that. Also, please subscribe to that channel uh, so you don't miss any of our workshops. Uh, for example, the Compression Masterclass coming up on 28th of April. I don't know how often I said that at that point, but it's I can't stress it enough. It's um, going to be a, a great follow-up to what I try to explain today. Also, next week we have another uh, workshop coming up for you, and that's... Um, yeah, the Ableton Live for Beginners uh, workshop where um, we're going to show you how to use Ableton in its um, basic functions, just how to start working with Ableton Live. And yeah, I guess that's it for today. Uh, thanks for checking in and see you soon. <laughs>